Hello everybody and welcome back to the Old Tab Pillbox. We're not in Abbotsford though, we are back at Triple Crowns. What do you call this place? I don't know. I don't have a name. We gotta come up with a name for it. The Beach right. Bunker. The Beach Bunker? The beach there you bunker. go. <laughs> the Beach Bunker. There, yeah. <laughs> the beach bunker. <laughs> there we go. And of course we've got... Detroit right here. <laughs> awesome to see you buddy. And... Triple Crown. Of course. Yeah. And Gantula. There you go. The gang's all here and we are going to be playing BBR 5. And uh, with there's been some more changes, little iterations that we're going to test out today. And uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, the Allies are being played by Triple Crown and myself. And the Axis are the two gentlemen flanking Triple Crown trying to intimidate him. But Even he is... we're wearing the same shirt. We yeah. were teammates in a previous uh, rendition of Axis yeah. and Allies. How, St. Louis, how... St. Louis BDR, we teamed up and uh, we came in first place, uh, thankfully. And uh, but that's what... Where is this guy's good luck to put us over the top? Yeah. Today, though, I'm teamed up with uh, Gargantua. Yeah. There you go. We're, we're, we're opponents tonight. I wore the same color shirt just to throw Gargantua off. That, that was the whole time. Psychological <laughs> warfare. <laughs> I'm confident that will He's not work. He's going to tell me his strategy. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. All right, folks, we'll let you know how round one goes in just a minute. Fantastic. All right, here we go. And no hit for the Battle of no Paris, AA. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys at one. Here we go. All right, let's go watch it in real time, folks. The Battle for Paris. Two hits. And two, because he's Gargantua. That's right. And then right. we got six guys. Six, six guys at two. One, two, three, four. Nice. Oh my god. Yes. And then I've got nice. one, two, three, four. Is it six tanks or five tanks? Five tanks. Oh. Five on. Five by three. Five by three. Five hits. Five hits. Oh, so amazing. yeah. That's one, one fighter left. Oh. We got a Bomber fight. Fi uh, hit. Tactical hit. On round one. I've never seen that. Yeah, so I, have one. I have never. Honestly, so I've never seen that. This, this is. This is. Right. Can, can you say something to the to the camera here for that battle for Paris? Well, my best battle for Paris ever. Yes. I only had one infantry lost. So uh, there's a chance at a repeat here. I have but, to say, but Germany's been great. Like, they grind me, man. They ground me down here. They ground me down here. Uh, they're uh, great in southern France. So, you know, it all evens up. Okay. Uh, I, I, I have to say that that's the best uh, German yeah. attack round one on, on France yeah. that I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's see, see what we can do eight, here. Eight at two. Two at three. One at four. Hopefully, that's some three hits. Oh, that's you pretty see, good. You did great. You did wow. great. Look at this. Seven hits. Wow. Three, four, five, wow. okay. six, okay. seven. There you go. All right. So Way what? above odds. Way above odds. <laughs> yeah. that, that could have gone two rounds and mm. had the same result. <laughs> You're right. right. It would have, actually would have been the same result. There you go. Lots yeah. of fun, oh, folks. It just happened in one turn. But yeah. Paris, southern France is gone. British fleet is down to a destroyer and a transport and a cruiser down here and... So it'll be interesting to see. We'll show you the rest of round one after this. Okay, round one is done. Uh, we're gonna start over here in the Pacific and the Americans come down here. This is, I, I have a very Global War 36 brain right now because I've been playing that for the last uh, month. And so uh, I'm uh, Triple Crown here is awesome because he knows BBR really well. So he's helping us out with that quite a bit. He's on my side. Um, there's some boys down there, came and took uh, Java with some okay. strength, the Japanese did Hold what on. the Japanese do, well, wiped us up in Yunnan, we took it back and only had one casualty, but now we're going to get crushed, there's the Air Force that's sitting in Quang Si, so no doubt we're going to lose all that, but we got 15 bucks, so we got five more guys coming on, the, uh, some of the Russians are headed this way, uh, the Japanese remained up in the north, I'm getting smarter. Uh, Calcutta, like all you guys are it works like that. You guys, all you guys are we abandoned Malaya basically, uh, bringing guys up there. Yeah, we only beat you up so many times. Over here, moves, right? <laughs> Africa, the British were able to beat up the Italians. Italians walked into Alamein and Transjordan though. And uh, yeah, took Greece. Greece was a little costly though. I think you lost a fighter in that one, eh? Yes, it did. Yeah. So some pretty good rolling by the Greeks, which was nice. But the French laid an egg over here. Gibraltar was unopposed, unopposed landing there. And uh, here come the Germans, they're gonna come down and kill this. So you see the British rondel on the Azores in Portugal, and of course on the Portuguese colonies of Angola and Mozambique. And uh, they get that when the- This is known uh, combat after. Axis uh, go and smash into, well, sorry, annex Spain. Uh, the French were able to flex a little bit and take back Vichy, but of course, that's not going to last too much. 
and some really bad dice for the British up here. Uh, the Germans had their battleship remaining in 111, right there. We attacked it with a destroyer and three fighters, and we ended up losing a destroyer and two fighters because yeah. we just couldn't get hits. That was really quite unfortunate. Uh, Commonwealth built a destroyer over here just so that we can't get convoyed and uh, sneak attacked by that lone German sub. So this is where we're at, folks. Uh, pretty typical opening, I think, all around. No big surprises. And round two's coming up. Germans are going down here. They're locking out the med, getting some free money and free stuff from Spain. The Axis gets so much free stuff. They should be They sure do, Kurt. They sure, they sure do. <laughs> Isn't so. that just great? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Gargantua's happy with that. That's, that's uh, excellent. It's, yeah. But uh, hey, we're gonna we're gonna put up as good a, a squawk as we can here. All right, round two. I'll let you know how it goes. Where's that big Japanese fleet going? All right, round three is about to begin, and uh, yeah, America just kind of farting around doing some fun things here. We've got the fleet coagulating down off the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, the Japanese have declared war on Les Français and took French Indochina and a few other things and uh, took Yunnan. I think you lost a couple of fighters in that? I lost three fighters. Three fighters yeah. in there, so. But I don't believe you took French Indochina, right? No. Okay. We took it. Oh, yeah, we you took it. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Uh, and so the Chinese are still alive and kicking and uh, we'll see how long that lasts, but we're having some fun with it. Uh, they've kind of shrugged off China as a major uh, point of contention, but uh, Calcutta has been evacuated uh, ostensibly to save to fight another day. But the Italians are now in the Middle East, uh, going to start making gobs of money over here. Cairo is Fortress Cairo. Not sure if the Axis are actually ever going to attack it. We'll see. I must mention that uh, Triple Crown has done an excellent job here at building up uh, Cairo. Uh, I mean, it's very difficult right now at this in this round for the attack for the Germans. Or the Italians, for that matter, to take Egypt. I learned so, that from you, Detroit. Yeah, so I, I, I compliment you because that's a. But you, that was possible because you built that factory round one, which normally many people criticize. Many people say, "Don't do that because you're going to lose Cairo." And so far, so good for the for the uh, 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 the Allies. Yeah. But we shall see. Maybe it's not the way to go. Are all these guys in there? No, they, they, they back actually off? the Italians yeah. withdrew, fell back to Tobruk. Oh, okay. Uh, leaving the Germans in uh, El Alamein. I see. All right. Um, yeah, the Italian lake is well and truly secure. They have taken all of North Africa. How much did money did Italy make on round two? 39. Yeah, there you go, folks. So Italy's a major power. That's without uh, Cairo. That's without Cairo. Yeah, it's just going to... Yes. Um, not much else to say here. The Germans uh, building some subs there last round. And now they're doing transports, so maybe looking at a sea lion to pull some heat off of Cairo. We should mention that Season 91 is under Axis control, which is a strategic uh, yeah. uh, territory for the Axis to be in possession of. Yeah. I think that's key as well. Yeah. Gives the Axis some peace of mind. Hmm. And uh, as, the, as the Axis are leaving China alone, the Allies are leaving the Atlantic alone. We're really not doing much <laughs> over here. Uh, the, as far as the Americans go, kind of focusing on the Pacific, not with everything, but with uh, a decent amount of stuff. All right, so here we are. That's that's the end of round two. We've rolled for our tech, and uh, Detroit rolled a one, I rolled a three, and Gargantua rolled a five. Yes. He's rich anyway. Sad face, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we go, folks. Round three coming up. Some big things going to happen. Big things. Will Cairo fall? All right, round four is beginning, and you see the Americans have dropped off a little expeditionary force up there and uh, brought a few guys down to Hawaii and took the Caroline Islands. Yes, the first Allied victory of the war <laughs> where we actually took some territory. That's not true. China took some stuff. But the Japanese uh, came back, took Manchuria back from the lone Russian that went in. Uh, the Chinese continue to spawn. Great. And we'll, uh, yeah, just more stuff for the Japanese to have some target practice with, I guess. 
Calcutta fell, and quite easily because uh, the uh, UK had backed out. And yeah, looking at all what's going on here, they're coming after the subs that sank the two naked transports. So tit for tat, as it were. And now uh, Gargantua is launching an attack. He attacked uh, Turkey with the Italians just to make it pro-allied, pro and now he can fly over it and everything. So he's going to go in there and do that. He's flying over with a bunch of stuff and bringing in a whole whack of units behind the slight Russian line on the front line, hitting it with a ton of stuff. So he's heading south. Uh, going for the industrial heartland of the Soviet Union. Over here the Italians had a little foray that was very successful. They landed a man in artillery and ended up killing three infantry in one round of combat. So that was pretty good for them. Uh, not much else going on over here. And uh, the Americans Built a little bit over here, brought, brought a bomber over, built another bomber, got some men. The Germans attacked the Allied fleet that was in 101, but because America wasn't at, wasn't at war at the time, it was a successful attack, and now those Germans are going to obviously leave the area. So, Germans are doing some non-com down here, and uh, blocking Lend lease So, yeah. Getting tougher and tougher to be an ally. The Americans are obviously in the war now. Let's see if they can do anything with their newfound money. Extra 20 bucks or so. Philippines likely fall this turn, but who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Well, having lots of fun, though. Learning all the great things that can be done in this game. All right. Round, round four. Coming up. All right, so we're halfway through the game. Uh, yeah, the Axis continue their role, but the Allies are showing some signs of life. The uh, Japanese... Used to it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, man, sorry. They're kicking our butts. No, it's which, good. You guys are bouncing back. You've held yeah. Egypt. I was surprised. I put incredible pressure to break this, and now it's like I'm on the verge of like losing I, I possibly this year. It's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Huh? Buddy, this is all yeah. you we'll see. Yeah, like one bright light, one bright light. The uh, yeah. Chinese are... Don't worry, I'll, I'll put the light up. I, we understand <laughs> that. And we're, we're fully expecting it, so we're, our hopes aren't dashed. We just know. Uh, so the Americans just kind of came down here with their fighters, lend some support to the Russian expeditionary force. And uh, that's it for China. Eastern frontier, Germans uh, came in and clobbered and got... Tons of success. They wiped out 16 units for the loss of four, I think. So it's just kind of the way it goes sometimes. What can you do? Um, British continue to hold here. And not much. Of, hey, hey, I'm filming here. This is this is on my channel. I'm sorry, man. Sorry. All right. Uh, over here. At minute two thirty seconds. <laughs> So over here we got the Americans and British bringing some stuff down. I'm not editing nothing, boy. That's kind of, you know. This is raw dog right here. That was Detroit no. Triple Crown. Too late. Um, so a little thing there, and America's decided to throw into the Atlantic. Uh, maybe too little, too late, but maybe we'll give the Germans something to think about. How much money are you making right now with Germany? Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65, 66. 66. How many with Japan? Japan, 77. And he's 44. Now. So we have 187 for the Allies in income, and the uh, 187. That's what I'm quick. The yeah. Is really quick, so it's yeah. 62.3 on average, and the Allies are making not that much. 40 plus whatever America's making, but 130. Yeah. So you guys yeah. are making 50 yeah. IPC more. Oh no, Russia too. Yeah. So you guys are still making. Still more. making more, but that's Russia's okay. Making 30. That's okay. We're we're on the comeback trail here. Maybe we can have a nice push here, uh, but the Germans, the Hun, is Hun almost is at the, to strike. the gates of Moscow Just here. Just waiting for the tape to finish, and then I'm going to get to business. All right. Well, we don't want to hold up Gargantua. Here we go. All right, guys, we're calling it here. Uh, we're just not even into uh, turn five very far, but uh, uh, Triple Crown and I 
we we saw something but then kind of forgot about it over here we got the germans with a couple of transports oops excuse me and i was counting okay they can come one two three you know where can they go they can't affect anything over there but uh we missed the obvious one and yes germany is in sydney uh with four infantry possible to take it back possibly uh but the Japanese had some plans down here, likely caused some real grief. So we're deciding to just kind of call it because under the BBR5 rules, the Commonwealth money is now gone, even though Canada is a different place, they can't make any money. South Africa is a different place, can't make any money. So if you lose any one of the three, uh, Triple Crown, is that how it goes? You lose any one of the three yeah, yeah, capitals, yeah, all, the all the money's gone and they can't make maybe, any money. Maybe it's just Ottawa and Sydney, not South Africa. Okay, because yeah. there is no city in South Africa, actually. So. Well, the, ja the Japanese play after the German move is to take their all their fleet elements, cycle their planes, take New Guinea and put their whole fleet here. Yeah. And there's just enough that I don't think the Americans can break it. It's probably like a 35% chance for the Americans if they go all in. Yeah. And even if they did win and survive with one or two ships or something, they're decimated. They've got nothing left to continue the attack. And the reality is, is that uh, the, the Japanese have every defense advantage because they own the ground, right? So they can go right down to their planes, cycle their planes around, land on the mainland, and you've got all this extra hit points and your carriers are rolling dice versus this one isn't. It's just uh, it's yeah. a really ugly situation. Yeah. And with New Guinea blocked, there's no functional way to get around to try and recover it. So there is a technical play for Anzac to go sort of uh, two at two and one at one, and the Japanese are planning to kill this fighter. Um, and, and you know, so it's a, kind of like three guys against four. It's possible, but again, odds are sort of sub 30%. And you know, if you win this block and you win this attempt to recapture, it's, it's forever finished. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. that situation. Um, yeah, and we had some changes over here as well. The Russians had uh, their forces sort of split. Germans were able to kind of break through smash an element here that forced the Russians to retreat but now we're kind of at a stalemate stage where the Germans were able to, to reinforce if these guys are going to move up etc and there's still some battles we didn't end up rolling but basically it's uh, it's fairly ugly Egypt did hold but obviously uh, the Middle East was lost and that's uh, that's a bit of a nasty for the Allies to kind of recover from and there's just there's too many spots that the Axis were able to edge the Allied players um, and I think probably the game will finish in the realm of 18 points, maybe something like that. It's very close to the yeah, but it, 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 there's enough battling back and little things that can go wrong here, there, right? Uh, German build is a whole bunch of men and mechanized. The idea is, you know, fill up that Atlantic wall. You know, we've got a couple turns. The German Atlantic dominance here is is absolutely crushing the Allies. I think UK is only making what 17 or 19 yeah, or something, bucks, yeah. right? And and you know they put all that effort into Egypt, which is great. Uh, but losing the the control of the Atlantic has been an absolutely desperate situation for the Allies. Uh, which then forced the Americans to pivot to build all this fleet here instead of building in the Pacific, and that's what's created sort of this this situation. So uh, the Allies have put up a hell of a fight, but it uh, wasn't enough today, unfortunately. Yeah. No, it was a strong game by the Axis. Yeah, yeah. Not... We had a lot of laughs despite <laughs> not, not winning. It was, we had a lot of, it was good. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learned, learned a lot. I have, this is my first BBR game in over a year, uh, if I recall correctly. Pretty sure I've been no, playing a whole are. bunch of everything else. All, all of us, I think, we're right. stumbling today getting back into the game, right? Yeah. Like hundred percent. Like hundred percent. Right back yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. So, but hey, a good time was had by all. Closing thoughts from Gargantua. I made one mistake. Well, what was it? <laughs> just shame. It was small. The shame. It was small. We just I, I neglected to move those those Italians into southern France. Ah. Uh, I don't make mistakes, so for me, uh, that bothered me. Okay. He's, he's, but he's, that was it. That was the only one. Exploited game. lots of mistakes, right? <laughs> was able to recover. It was not a problem. But uh, slipping up, man. I haven't played BBR in a long time. So. Same thing for me. Last time I played was with uh, Triple Crown uh, for the BBR St. Louis uh, this past March. And uh, so it was actually uh, kind of uh, getting my, my, my feedback onto me because yeah. I was very rusty to say the least. Fortunately, my teammate here. Yeah, he's uh, one of the best in the world, if not the best, you know, he's up there. So I was able to uh, kind of ride his pigtails and uh, <laughs> coattails, I'm sorry. You got pigtails? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I take advantage. Uh, I think I did all right overall. You did excellent. Uh, I was very happy with, with, my, with my performance. Uh, so I didn't make any major errors. 
and uh, I, I'm pretty happy. I like the fact that I was able to take Calcutta turn three. Yep. That made me very happy. Definitely uh, uh, pushed the, the British back uh, further into the Middle East. Yeah. And it was a, a, a big advantage early on round three for, for the Axis. So, yeah. Which, of course, he was able to capitalize as well because he opened, the Axis, the Germans, and the Italians were also pushing I into the Middle East by round three, four, and five. Yeah. Crown. I think it was just been a lot of fun with Kurt uh, being teammates because usually we play each other, yeah. but just talking strategy and collaborating together and we were under siege it felt like even before the game started but from turn one, yeah. but you know, we uh, we had to change strategy on the fly multiple times yeah. and it was, it was a lot of fun having our little talks and yeah, I had a hell of a day, so. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it was a, I think. And, and also, uh, changing the subject a little bit, by the way, this is the first time I've had the pleasure of meeting Kurt in person, huh? Kurt and I have known each other for the longest, uh, you know, but it's all been via social media, and uh, that's about it, but uh, yeah. meeting him in person is uh, an honor for me, so, you know, my friend, uh, it definitely was, it is, you know, fun, and uh, I'm so glad that I yeah. got to meet you uh, uh, in real life in person. Hey, man, pleasure's all mine, <laughs> kind of stole my thunder there, but yeah, oh, <laughs> meeting yeah. Detroit for the first time yes. in person has been a, an yeah. absolute yeah. pleasure. Some other guys from the VBR community, we wish everybody here, but yeah. soon in September we'll see see everybody. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, you guys are in our thoughts today. We had lots of laughs. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bring the ball gags, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I ha I had a fun time here today, just seeing all the crazy things that uh, these brilliant minds can come up with. Uh, big thanks to Triple Crown who stopped me from making some pretty stupid mistakes. So thank oh, no, you, sir. Was, Appreciate was, that. Uh, <laughs> Um, it, you know, it was. It was trying to figure out what we could do. Uh, to be honest, it was it was a pretty tough day of gaming. Uh, right out of the gate, they had the initiative, and they never gave up the initiative. We were starting to peel some back here, but with America being out of the game for half the game uh, and being able to do literally nothing, uh, really hurt your chances. So. I don't know, do we want to make an encouraging note to, to Sired to say, hey, let's bring America in on round two. And Russia. I would do Russia two and maybe US three yeah. or something like that. Because it, it, the, the ability of the Axis is just absolutely pummel one player, mm -hmm. uh, make all these gains and all this headway and, and not have to fight. It's not designed to really be played that way, especially in a, an eight round setting. And so I think uh, that would be a, a suggestion. There's a few other ideas we have. But yeah. yeah. Maybe bringing in the Soviet Union one turn earlier, one turn earlier. and the U.S. one turn earlier. I think that's maybe an overkill. Yeah. Just my, my opinion mm -hmm. on it. I, I think uh, you know, take small incremental steps, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. many yeah, at the same yeah. time. So I think uh, maybe bringing in the Soviet Union round uh, you know, one step, one round earlier, maybe a possible answer to the conundrum that we have, because uh, it does seem that the Axis have uh, a slight advantage. You know. So, yeah. Yeah, speaking as, as one of the allies, and I uh, played the allies a few times in BBR and in the, uh, pretty much all the iterations, it's uh, in this version, it really seems like you're just, you're getting kicked. And that happened in the other ones too, but in this one, it seems as though, like Italy was peaking over 40 yes. IPCs, right? 40 which is, for, which a, is for, for a minor power, right? They're a minor power and they're making over 40 and uh, Germany's making over 60 and Japan's making over 60 or 70 and they're all beaten up on the UK who's down to 20. Yeah. Right? And, and that's all they have to do is just focus everything on the UK. Now again, Triple Crown did an awesome job holding on to Cairo and using everything we could but it took every dollar that we had to hold on to it and then like we say, turn four we're making 19. Right, we're, we're t we've also, got 19. A possible answer is also the, the 10 IPC penalty for going to, into Spain. That, that may be something that Sire may want to consider looking into it once again. Because I believe they did look into it and then mm -hmm. they, they decided not to. But I'm telling you right now, the, the changes that were introduced, in my opinion, are uh, insufficient. I think it didn't really, I didn't feel it. Mm -hmm. Not, didn't feel it at all. So, I don't know, did you, uh, so, did you feel that those the changes made, but, that it benefited the Allies? I do think it was helpful. Like, I never took Portugal, and I did think that it was it was helpful that they automatically became British, especially in Angola and Mozambique, you know, because mm -hmm. you got to get rail movement, and it did help. Uh, it's just a question of whether it's enough, because I, I get that, you know, we're like, oh, well, we're going to add some units for the British. 
But keep in mind that Spain was a whole bunch of units added for the Axis. They get a bunch of you know, money and whatever, five, six guys for free. So yeah. it's probably, it's not particularly even. Yeah. Uh, one suggestion was putting a naval base in the Azores, which I thought was a really good suggestion because then you can never really prevent uh, like with Gibraltar, one of the best things about Gibraltar is you take it, if you hold it, the Allies, they can come, but they can't kind of go back. But if the Azores was always a naval base, it just gives that insulated layer of, mm -hmm. hey, if you used Spain to take Gibraltar, then uh, then the Azores is always there to backstop it. And it doesn't really change anything, it really so it's kind of a freebie, uh, but it provides a really significant insulator for the, uh, for the Allies. Hmm. Just a thought. So there you go, yeah. So yeah, the 10 IPC, Penalty is something that, that may be worth it, or also bringing in the Soviet Union one turn early, reason being that it is a finite game, as you like to say. Mm -hmm. It's an eight round game. Uh, the Soviet Union doesn't really come into the war until round four, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, unless Germany attacks early. So, it may, it may make sense to do something like that, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, with the Axis, you know, with Italy again getting up to 40, Germany being around 60, so you got 100 bucks only going against the UK and Germany can just build whatever they want to and they don't have to worry about a Russian attack coming so it frees up you know we can just build like you built a couple of bombers you're building uh, a lot of infantry yeah, you built transports build for the Soviet Union yeah. in the first three turns of the game yeah. and then the last turn really what I ended up doing is I spent some money on a few air bases to sort of pivot uh, with the Italians to get uh, to get units to the Eastern Front and then when I wanted to, I was just like, oh, I'll just have the money now. I could build 20 units, and, and then I was able to kind of catch up. Uh, and, and the Russians, despite having a large stack that was defensible, it wasn't, it wasn't like a mobile stack or a particular, you know, didn't have a high attack value. So it was not hard to pivot uh, with Germany. And so you have, you know, three turns where you could just wreak havoc and just ignore Russia, and it's great. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, turn around and punish them. It's a bit, it's a bit unfair, it feels like. But, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's global 40, and that's mm -hmm. kind of been the game, so... Mm. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe if the Russians could attack one round earlier, if that was a real threat, then that might change some things. Yeah. And uh, I believe you gentlemen are playing a game tomorrow. Yes. Right. So they're gonna be playing a game tomorrow. I won't be here though, so I don't know if anybody else what? is gonna take some video. Huh? Spending time at home. Spending time. At, I was away all last week in Oklahoma. So uh, <laughs> my wife, my gracious wife, love you, hon. Uh, <laughs> I'll be I'll be home. Um, but uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks to my, uh, my partner, Triple Crown, and my opponents, Gargantua, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. My honor, bro. Thanks. It's New, Jersey. Honor. New, Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Right? Wow. That's right. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> I am like, literally 15, 20 minutes from New York. So, yeah. so that's a cool. long 15 minutes. I, I live five minutes from the States. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day we'll get to go visit the bunker. Uh, I got there. to have that. Yeah. There we go. It's all dried out now, eh? Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> but it's totally different. Totally. It's a, it's a different place. Cool. Yeah. Well, it'd be great to come, and, come and visit. It's not anymore. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching, folks. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in. As we always say, hug your loved ones. Thank your friends for playing. Thanks for playing, guys. A lot of fun. And as always, may those dice be with you.